Okay, so now I can start properly. So my name is Hugo Machado, and um, currently I'm the CTO for STI. STI is a medical simulation company. It works on medical simulation. We've been doing a lot of work with uh, AR, with um, projection mapping on medical mannequins for simulation. I also work for Liftoi. Lifta is um, a Finnish company that does ed education. Basically, they have these amazing documentaries, 360 degrees wide, interactive, and um, so everything has been done with the same technology that I'm going to be talking about. I also teach at Ismai, the um, University of Maya, private university of Maya. I do some consulting as well, and sometimes I manage to sleep a bit as well. Okay, I think. Okay, there it is. So, in 1991, I got my first computer, and I started doing multimedia. My media, what I used, was some graphics, some text, and some very crude animation. Well, the computer had one kilobyte of RAM, not one megabyte. It had one kilobyte of RAM. It was black and white, no graphics. Graphics were just a set of uh, redefined characters. But that was my thing. As soon as I got my first computer, that's what I wanted to do, anything related to multimedia. So then I got my second computer, the ZX81. No, that was the first one, sorry, the ZX Spectrum, which many of you, I hope, have heard about it. So I got a huge boost in processor speed to 3.4 kilohertz, something like that. Um, RAM, I got 48 kilo uh, kilobytes, exactly kilobytes. It's really hard to think about these <laughs> measurements right now. And uh, I got eight colors with lots of color clashing, but eight colors and sound. Sound was amazing. So I started writing my own games. I learned about BASIC at the time. Started writing some games, and I started doing animations, BASIC animations, illustrations, things like that. And that pattern kept going on. So I got an Amstrad CPC, an Amstrad PC something, um, Commodore Amiga, lots of uh, computers, and then each iteration had better graphics, better sound, faster processors, more memory. So I've been doing multimedia since the beginning. And then eventually someone invented multimedia, and people started talking about multimedia, which was amazing for me. Because as you can see from my background, my background has always been uh, shared between arts and technology. So I did my, um, my bachelor's degree in jazz composition. I've always been into music a lot. Then I did my master's in multimedia, and at that point, multimedia was actually a thing. Then I did my PhD in digital media, so I've been always doing things in multimedia, digital media. The thing is that I was lost for a while, because for a long time, nobody knew what that was. Nobody, well, I think the concept had not even been thought of. So it was a bit hard for me to know some things about this, something about this, be the jack of all trades, master of none. Eventually, what I had been doing until then turned into an area, uh, an important area. So I've used a lot of tools in the past. Um, my research is mainly in computer graphics, simulations, virtual reality, augmented reality, so basically the virtual continuum, um, and uh, computer games. That's one thing I love, that's one thing I teach, that's one thing that I'm not so much into playing computer games. I like making them. That's the fun for me, it's making computer games. Um, and in this industry, Lately, I have worked in a few areas, but in a few business areas, but I've always been doing multimedia. Um, lately, as I said, I've been working with education and medical simulation. Wrong way. Okay, there we go. So here's a brief summary of what I'm going to be talking about. So first, just a quick reminder, what is data visualization? Then we're going to talk about quickly about WebGL. WebGL is a game changer. Um, some 
examples of WebGL frameworks to make it a bit simpler. Then we're going to talk about Unity. So now you know. Now you know my thing, Unity. Apart from everything that I said so far, I'm also, as you're going to find out, a Unity evangelist. So I would like to see some hands. How many of you know about Unity? OK, a few. And now I would like to know how many of you actually did something with Unity? Not so many, but a few more. And from these, how many of you did something that was not a game? All right, we have three. I'm amazed. Perfect. Um, so yeah, isn't Unity back, uh, for games? We're going to discuss that. And then, why would anybody use Unity? And why am I at um, a web conference, a web-based, web-related conference, talking about Unity? So the way I organized my presentation is with a demo project. It's a five-second demo project. I hope it exemplifies some of the things that I plan to talk to you about. I think I would have loved to do a, something more hands-on, but um, we cannot do it in this kind of conference. Um, so I'm going to combine things a bit. I'm going to talk about, I have my presentation. I'm going to do the demo. At some point, I'm going to start the demo, quickly go over it, go back to the presentation, and then after the presentation, I'm going to go back to the demo. So then we're going to talk about a little bit about how the demo was made. OK, so what is data visualization? Data visualization is just basically a way of getting raw data and showing it in, in a more understandable format. Um, it's not easy for humans to look at a bunch of numbers, having a load of numbers, and know what's the highest number here, what's the average, what's, um, is there any concentration, is there a bell curve, anything, from looking at a lot of numbers alone. Data visualization, visualization actually helps us with that. It turns all that data into information that we can um, analyze, understand a little bit better. And just by looking at it, at least we get a good idea. I'm not going to say that. Of course, we're not going to know exactly what's happening everywhere. But we have a good idea of what that data is telling us. Because that's the way that human brains work. So. To visualize data, in the past I used a lot of tools, uh, both online and offline, both for the web and uh, standalone applications, etc. And there was um, something missing. We had things that, um, sorry, I'm going to have to say this, I used them for a long time professionally, like Flash, like <laughs> Silverlight. Um, and uh, there were some good things about it, yeah, at least that's, um, they were the pioneers uh, in getting real-time, interactive, fluid um, experiences in the browser. But there were a, problem, a lot of problems about it. And uh, I guess we all know about those. So we needed a standard. We needed a way to actually do something fast to interact with the GPU. That's a really important thing, especially nowadays. And um, WebGL does all that. WebGL is a standard, so most browsers should, or actually all browsers, should be able to play WebGL experiences. It's really, really, really powerful. If anybody ever tried to do something with WebGL and OpenGL, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Actually, uh, on the opposite, it's quite hard, and it's a lot of work. So we get frameworks to work with WebGL to make it easier, to make it more natural. And there's a lot of them. And there's code-based frameworks where you code everything, but you don't have to do all the WebGL really dark things. So it's easier. It gives you an interface to actually work with WebGL easy. Then you get some graphical um, frameworks with 
node-based graph systems with um, drag and drop and things like that. And then we have a hybrid approach. So code is very versatile. When we're coding, we can do everything. We're not exactly talking the computer's language. Actually, we are, we are if we go down to assembly and things like that. But usually, we don't do that. We have a really big problem nowadays. Not a problem, but uh, a challenge. Time to market. Time to market is really, really important. And this world is very competitive, so we have to release our things working flawlessly as soon as possible. WebGL is crazy for that. Um, a graphical editor helps a lot with that, and organization with uh, everything. But then we probably don't have the same flexibility. So then we have some hybrid frameworks that take the best of both worlds. And as we're going to see, Unity is one of them. So yes, why did I start using Unity? This goes all the way back to 2009, 2010, when I started my PhD. So I did all my um, analysis of the state of the art. I got my problem, my hypothesis, my everything, research questions. So I knew what I wanted to do. But actually, by the way, it's very small. But what I wanted to do is what's at the bottom right of the screen. I needed the tools to end up with that. That's basically um, the title of the thesis is the application of real-time strategy games to emergency management. So that's basically the command application where the commander can see all the troops and manage all the troops as if it was a uh, real-time strategy game. But the troops are real. The troops are firemen, they're policemen, they're um, medical emergency personnel, etc. So they can actually manage all that, have a big view from the outside, very general, and um, manage and command the, the, units, the units. So that was kind of a challenge. That was a challenge. Because I needed graphic fidelity. That's the real world, actually. That's the, um, the campus of FEOP, the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Porto. So what they're seeing is basically the real world rendered in 3D in real time. Um, there's communications with a lot of operatives, everything happening in real time. So I needed something that was really good at graphics, interaction, communications, all that. And I had four years to do it. Not four, because the first year um, I was doing other things. So I tried a, a few different things. So first thing was processing. How many of you know about processing? OK, that's good. How many of you like it? Oh, just that. OK. <laughs> I love processing. I think processing is amazing for prototyping. It's really quick. We can actually, it's called um, programming sketchbook. And that's for something. It's a sketchbook where you program quick sketches, and you get really fast prototyping. But not for this. This was a bit too much. So I tried Shiva. Shiva was really good. It had its mind in the right place, but the muscles didn't get there. Um, I tried the main game engines, uh, Unreal Engine, Rai Engine. Um, too hard, too complicated, too uh, demanding on performance. So I tried Unity, and when I tried Unity, uh, I was amazed because it's uh, really organized. You have the best of both worlds. It's hybrid. We can have an editor to do everything. We can code and have the versatility. Yeah, but isn't it for games? Apparently, I think one or two people said it might not be just for games. Some people don't know about it, and the others probably think it's for games. And it is. Unity um, was released as a game engine, and it is a game engine. It's known as a game engine. The thing is that a game engine, it's something that needs some very special characteristics. Um, one of the most important things in uh, game development is the game loop. We have a loop that, uh, well, it's just getting events, inputs, and uh, AI, and things like that, all the time doing the same thing. That's implemented in Unity. We have... Um, well, um, pathfinding algorithms straight in Unity. We have things that are used in games all the time in Unity. 
But the thing is that more and more, the things that we use for games, we use them for a lot of other things, for simulations, which is one of the main things I do, for virtual reality, for augmented reality, for presentations, for data visualization. So one of the advantages of Unity for this kind of thing is that it implements more than 90% of the things that we're going to have to think about when we're working with 3D or even 2D. Um, well, matrixes, quaternions, quaternions. Who really knows about quaternions? Anybody here that is really good with quaternions? OK, so probably nobody has two masters and three PhDs, because I think that's what you need to really understand quaternions. And with Unity, you don't have to understand quaternions. You know, they just work. Um, OK, what else? It handles all the complex math behind the scenes, matrix transformations, the physics, everything. It handles it behind the scenes. It gives you a really powerful editor, which can be extended with anything that you want. So it's not a closed thing. You can get more and more functionality by creating it yourself or getting it from somewhere else. You can program um, uni Unity behaviors with C Sharp, with an amazing language, at least for me. Um, it's really easy to do it. You can use other kinds of languages and also graph-based uh, languages, node-based languages. So if you don't know anything about programming, you can still program with Unity. Well, there's the Asset Store. The Asset Store is like the Play Store um, or the App Store for assets. So let's say you're going to do something. You're going to visualize an elephant that changes color depending on the weather. You need an elephant so you can make it yourself, or you can go into the Asset Store and get it. And I'm talking about an elephant. But I can also talk about. Uh, importing PowerPoints or exporting whatever you're doing to PowerPoint, to video, anything almost uh, exists in the Asset Store. And you can just go there and get it. And it's another tool that you have. And Unity is cross-platform. It works on Macs, on PCs. It works on Linux. But most of all, it builds for Windows, Linux, Mac, PlayStation, many PlayStations, Xbox, the Nintendo Wii. Who cares about that here, right? I'm in the wrong place. But it builds for WebGL. And that can be a big, big plus. So why? Why Unity? Well, it separates the logic from the presentation layer. You have two layers. You can have your designers working on the visuals and have your programmers working on code. And it's just seamless. It just works. Um, then you have the game loop that I said, and many other things that are part of a game skeleton. And the game skeleton is not just used for games, as I mentioned. You have a lot of support. Lots of forms support directly from Unity. Lots of contributors that create assets that have great support. The quality of everything is really good. I'm not mentioning performance here, but not because it doesn't exist. Performance is amazing. Um, time to market. Above all, time to market. We need something, we do it really quick. It works. So now I'd like to go into the demo project before I continue. I'm going to show you what I did for this presentation. And then I'm going to talk a little bit of how I did it. And then I'm going to go back to the demo project and hopefully um, show how easy and how relevant it is and how you can achieve it with Unity. So my demo is going to run offline. I could have used uh, web services, whatever, for getting data. I actually decided to get offline data. So I'm using um, comma separated values for everything. I hope you can see this properly on the projector. There's a little bit of light, but we just warped through space into Earth. We're going to visualize something on the planet Earth. And uh, maybe that this was a bad choice on my part, which I found out later. But what we're going to visualize is the average wage per country. 
And the reason why it's probably not a really good thing is that when I change years, yeah, the average wages change like $10. So the bars that you're going to see representing the, um, the salaries, they're going to change slightly, so pay attention to them because they actually change size, but um, it might be very subtle. So after zooming, and this is eye candy, this is all eye candy. Um, so we zoomed into the Earth, did we need that? No, we could just show the Earth, but you know, it's nice. So after we get the Earth, I'm going to load a list of countries. As I said, I loaded this, these countries, uh, country data, from a comma-separated value file. Um, and I have a country code for the countries first. What I have, I think I'm going to show it in a bit, as um, the country code, latitude and longitude, and um, the name of the country itself. And then here, I'm just going to change the year. This is showing me the average wages for 2013 for some countries. Actually, I have the list of all the countries, but I only have data for these countries. That's why on this side of the world, there is not much information. So now that's when I ask you to pay a bit of attention, because I think that the bars are going to change. They did. They increased. I don't know if all of them, but you can see an increase. And I'm going between the first and the last possible year, because I would say that the difference is bigger. So yeah, I think we can see that. This is my demo. This is pretty much it. I said five seconds. So coming back to the presentation, how did I do this? Um, first thing, the sphere. The Earth, yeah, we know it's not exactly a sphere, but for visualiza visualization, it is a sphere. It's a special sphere um, because when we get those materials, those textures, uh, showing the countries, the water, everything, we're going to have to wrap uh, 2D textures over a 3D object. And uh, when we do that, there may be some distortions. Like, you know, just think you buy a basketball for your kids or something like that for Christmas, and you have to wrap it in uh, wrapping paper. It's a round thing being wrapped by a flat thing. So there's going to be some problems. So by using this kind of uh, sphere, this is a Nyko sphere, it's just a subdivision of a sphere in lots of triangles, um, we minimize not the distortions of the model itself, but of the wrapping of the textures around it. So we could use other kinds of spheres. There's a lot of ways to create a 3D sphere. But we use this sphere because it minimizes the distortions of the textures around it. And it also allows for the correct placement of the countries where they actually should be. They will be placed correctly on the sphere anyway, but if the texture doesn't match, um, Lisbon could be in Lisbon, but then the map could not be. So, yeah, this was the only consideration. The sphere had to be slightly special, but that's it. Then we have maps. Um, Unity uses different shaders. I don't know if uh, you are familiar with the idea of shaders. Shaders is just um, small code fragments that run in the GPU. And what they do is they represent materials. They represent um, a lot of things running in the GPU. And uh, the way we actually render these things, mostly nowadays we use PVR. PVR stands for Physically Based Rendering. Until now, we just made it look good with lots of tricks. PBR is still a lot of tricks, but it's physically accurate. So we have the right indexes of ref reflectivity, and the glossiness, all that. We are based on real-world uh, real light objects, etc. So they're consistent. They're real. And for rendering something using PBR, we use different maps. Actually, I might just go back to the demo right now to show something, which I'm going to come back to it in a second. If we look at uh, Earth, for example, yeah, we can see that we have different colors. We have the water, we have the land. But also, there's a few more differences in that respect. 
the water is actually shiny, whereas the land is not shiny. So the reflectivity of each surface is different. Not only the color, but other conditions as well. So what that means is that we use different textures for one material alone. The main texture is going to be the albedo texture. That's color information without any light information. If, if we look around, for example, this wall is white, but it's blue and green and, um, well, blue again, because the light is hitting the wall and it's changing its appearance. The albedo is just color, the color of the, the wall without any further light information. Then we have uh, metallic and smoothness, or specular and glossiness. Um, that are, those are different ways to represent the same thing. We have uh, materials that are dielectric. We have materials that are metallic. And uh, using these maps, we can say exactly what kind of um, exactly what kind of uh, material we're representing. We also have um, a normal map, which gives us um, an idea of um, basically a, a 3D where 3D is not there. And there's other maps as well. Um, one of them is emission map, which makes an object actually emit light. So for this demo project, with this, all this in consideration, first thing I needed was a list of all the countries with their latitude and longitude so I could place them on the globe. So there is a sample and a prototype of the file. As I mentioned before, is country code, latitude, longitude, and country name. Then the salary data. Because we already have the country code, that's the key for um, interacting, interacting between both data sources. We just have the country code. And for each year, we have the salary. So in this demo project, what I did next was animation. The globe animation in the beginning, like a spaceship traveling to Earth, it's a keyframe animation. That was done in the editor. It took four, five seconds. You just go to the first frame, camera is here. Last frame, camera is there. It just flows through space. Doing this in WebGL would be complicated, to say the least. Um, we can set curves for how the camera is going to move from here to here, accelerating in the beginning, breaking in the end, or um, easing in, easing out, etc. Um, after that, the position of the camera is automatically interpolated. Uh, and everything can be edit, edited visually in the Unity editor. Uh, the Earth rotation, it's procedural. Basically, I created a script, C Sharp, which exposes in the Unity editor in this inspector the public variables that uh, I actually wanted to expose. So if I change the angular speed, the Earth is going to rotate in one direction or the other, faster, slower, etc. And this is the code to do it, these two lines. So then there's light. Light information is really important. We have global illumination, which is basically Earth, the dark side of, of the moon. The dark side of the moon is probably not really dark, not 100%. And for us, we don't want it to be dark. So global illumination simulates the effect that uh, reflection of light on other objects can light up hidden parts of uh, objects in the shadows. Uh, we have emissive surfaces like those bars in the graph. They actually emit light, etc. So then we have eye candy. I would warn everybody that does data visualization to really hold back on eye candy. It's really nice, but it can be a little distracting. And actually, if we look at these two images, the bottom one looks nicer. The top one, it's really easy to see the bars, whereas the bottom one, not so much. So it looks good, but we have to weigh the pros and cons. So. Going on to the next slide, and something that is probably interesting to a lot of people here is, OK, so I did this. It's running in the browser and WebGL in a canvas, HTML5. But can I interact with it with um, JavaScript with the rest of the web page? Of course you can. And it's really, really easy. Just create uh, your JavaScript libraries, put it in the plugins folder in Unity, and just call them from a C-sharp script. 
And uh, if you want to do the other way around, if you want to send data from JavaScript to WebGL, you just use the method, <coughs> sorry, the method send message. Call an object, a method on an object, and um, parameters. It's really easy. So this is pretty much it. But before my thank you, I'd just like to go back to this, this quickly. And um, OK, so maybe I'm going to have to restart and show you some of the things, actually, with the things that I talked about. Maybe you can see them happening right now. All these stars that actually happened, the ones behind, it's a cube map. It's just a huge texture, 360 degrees. But there are actually dynamic stars. And those dynamic stars is just I instantiate a star. Um, so for a loop, and for each star, I'm just going to instantiate it and put it into a random location. So all this, and now. If I load the countries, there they are. I'm not even going to change the year. We can see Bloom. We can see uh, all this eye candy, etc. And now I would like to say the, my secret, maybe. It took me longer to actually do the presentation than it took me to do this demo. I did this in uh, one afternoon. Tops. No, not even that. The most complicated thing, the, the most time-consuming thing were the maps, the textures for the globe. Everything else, it's really quick, and it's really powerful. So with this said, um, I would like to encourage you to try out WebGL for data visualization and try to work on WebGL with Unity. At least try it. It's amazing. You're not going to regret it. So thank you for your attention. If there are any questions, I'll take them now. Good morning. Thank you for your presentation. Actually, I work as a data visualization developer as well. Mm -hmm. I do, do many things, and uh, data visualization is one of the things I do. Um, I work mainly with d3.js. Uh, I was l looking at this presentation and I was thinking, wow, this is, this is really great. But at the same time, there's, there's still a learning curve. You still have to learn Unity. And uh, you said you did this in an afternoon. For example, if I, if I had to, to, to draw a, a 2D map and put some bars to, to represent the same visualization, uh, maybe I could do it in one hour or two. Uh, so. Um, the thing you said, the time to market and uh, um, the learning curve the, that is associated with Unity, how, how would you recommend to people like me to, to get into, the, into this world and to add value, for example, to, to companies, to, uh, uh, to, to customers who, who might be interested in, in this kind of visualization? Thank you. All right. So every time we start using a new tool, it takes learning. We have to learn how to use it. And as I said in the beginning, I went through a lot of tools. Some of them, I think that I would still be learning the basics. And um, I always, every day, I learn about Unity more and more things. So you go gradually. And um, well, if you can, the best thing for you to do is get each person to do its speciality. So if you're a coder, you do the coding and get um, a 3D artist or whatever. So it's a cumulative l learning. Right now, I do everything. I do my modeling. I do my coding. I do my basically everything. I'm pretty sure that other people would do each thing probably better than I do. But I've been learning this over eight years. But what I, what I can say about Unity, and that's why I recommend it so hard, is because I tried Shiva, Unreal, uh, Source. I tried a lot of things. Unity is really organized. And by being organized, I think it's really easy to learn. Of course, there is a lot of things to learn. You just start slowly learning about it. Because once you know a little bit about it, your time to market can be really, really fast. Of course, right now, you're probably more comfortable with other technologies. And your time to market is going to be faster using those. But 
if you get into it and learn a bit more about this tool, then your time to market is going to be really quick. Um, regarding, you, you asked um, what customers might want from this, right? So a lot of things. Um, data visualization is an obvious one for me. So if you have to visualize any kind of data, I went for the globe, the earth, with bars coming out of it. Because I think it really represents the power of unity, although uh, in a data visualization perspective, it's probably not the best example. I just wanted to show as many things as possible. But all other kinds of um, types of data visualization, you can do it. Like, um, for example, you have the airlines on, on the world. Where do they go? Where do they travel? You just show it on the world. You have... Um, Configurators, for example, um, for some car brand, you can have in your own application, you can, you can have your car showing it in 3D. Um, the customer can um, manipulate it in any way it, uh, he wants or she, um, change colors, change add options, etc. That's one thing that customers usually want. Um, and there's a lot more than this, you know. The sky is the limit, really. What customers want, what I can say that is the most requested kind of work for me, it's pretty much data visualization and um, for, th for the general customers and um, configurators. Of course, in the area that I work, I do simulation with it. VR, WebGL, there is a branch of WebGL then, which is WebVR. So you can have VR in the browser. Um, so every day, there's more needs are created. Needs that we didn't have before, they are being created. And um, with this, I have been able to reply to, to answer all those needs. Thank you.